Hey guys, what's up? It's Jose again uh, from Patrick and Friends Music Company. I hope you liked the previous lesson. Um, once again, uh, hit that subscribe button, uh, give us a thumbs up, and uh, click the link for our Patreon page where you'll get more exclusive uh, video lessons and more in-depth uh, really conversations and communication for uh, things that you may have on music, the instrument, uh, or, or anything like that. On the last lesson, we were talking about uh, the our positions, half the uh, half position and first position, uh, really kind of working up to the to the G uh, on the E string or C on the A string, F on the D string, B flat on the G string. And if if you don't remember, I'll just give you a quick little uh, recap of that. Um, walking down chromatically from the e, starting on an open E, move down a string. So that's uh, that's a little small recap, a quick little recap of of uh, our previous lesson that we had. As I mentioned on the first lesson, um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about positioning with the right hand because it is a very important uh, and key aspect of of playing the upright bass and uh, getting a, a sound out of it, getting a nice sound out of it. Uh, that your bandmates uh, will be pleased with. First of all, holding your bass. You want to kind of set it on this kind of like side bone right here on your hip. Uh, you kind of lean it towards you every now and then. You can kind of rest the whole side of it um, on you. It kind of helps a little bit sometimes. But really, you kind of want to have this uh, kind of like angle at it. You're standing with your feet nice and firm. Um, a balanced weight on your instrument, uh, your instrument coming and leaning on you so you don't have to do too much work on holding the instrument with your uh, left hand or even with your right hand. It gives you the best freedom to be able to play uh, and, and get a nice comfortable tone without getting tired or fatigued uh, throughout the show. So, the right hand. Once you get your posture right, stand firm and stand with your shoulders broadened, you simply just want to bring that right hand over the strings uh, my thumb is resting right, just right here on the side of the fingerboard. You kind of just bring it over and you just let that hand rest on there. And when you pull, you see how my fingers are a little sideways here, um, kind of like uh, a little skewed on the string and you just want to pull. That is that. Simple as that. And you get a nice ring out of the instrument. Just like that. And, and that's that's with the index finger. You really want to try pulling with this kind of like meaty part of the finger. Um, that's You really get your best uh, tone out of that using that technique. As for the middle finger, because it's very important to be able to alternate fingers, especially once you start getting into fast lines or anything like that, upper tempos, um, it, it'll make your life a lot easier to know how to do that. Uh, so similar concept. Uh, you kind of just gonna bring that over and you're gonna let that kind of just rake that string. Just like that. Um, and you notice on my fingers, um, throughout this whole quarantine process, my calluses kind of start going away, start playing with drummers, and um, they're kind of coming back. But that's kind of what you're gonna go through when you first start getting into the instrument, digging into the instrument and getting that sound. For the middle finger, you wanna use this meaty part as well from the finger. Now you're not gonna be able to get the same exact um, uh, positioning from the first end, from the index finger on the middle finger just because, I mean, it's human body. That's just how it is. And a good way to practice that, well, again, you put a metronome on, a nice slow tempo, maybe 60 beats per minute, uh, really even a 40 beats or 50 beats per minute and just kind of work that out with long tones. Just three, four, and just focus on one string until you get a nice comfortable tone. And just keep working at that. And then when you switch fingers to the middle finger, you want to get as close as possible to that, to the tone of the first finger. Because as bass players, what you want to do is have a consistent sound to drive the band. It's one of the primary uh, primary things that the bass player does. Between the bass player and the drummer, we carry groove, we carry feel, and we carry 
uh, time and we kind of help push the energy forward on the bandstand. Uh, really, no matter what genre you're playing, we are the kings of the foundation. So it is very important, whether you're playing electric or upright, to always have the most consistent sound possible, no matter what finger you're using, no matter what bass you're using. So once again, you kind of just start alternating. And then once you start playing, for example, a nice little F blues here, and you notice that sometimes I'd use both fingers at the same time. And it's, it's just a, kind of like a habit thing, but my tone never really changes. Um, there are some notes that will obviously ring out more than others. For example, open strings will always ring out more than a, you know, a, 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 finger, or a note that you're playing with your fingers. Notice that F doesn't ring as much as the D string. Uh, just because an open D string it's just open strings, so it just resonates with the whole bass. Nevertheless, uh, you want to have a, the most consistent tone possible. So that's where you work with your long tones. And you can do that with the exercise, the previous exercise of chromatic tones. You want steady tone. And if you have a metronome, even better. You could just loop that. Switch fingers, alternate, and you just work, bring that over across the strings. That's, that's really a good way to start getting your chops up in terms of getting a sound and getting a tone. If you want to make a career out of this, especially uh, our money and our bread and butter really comes from the sound that you're getting and the feel and groove that you're carrying forward on the instrument. Um, that is that is where that is our pocket. That is our home. Uh, getting a nice, just you know, steady. Just a nice, steady, warm beat, feel, groove that just kind of helps carry everything forward. I know I haven't talked too much about the left hand, um, and that is um, outside of the positionings, but. I do want to talk on that very briefly before we, um, you know, move on to anything else. And for that, I'm going to turn my bass a little bit so you can kind of see the kind of what my hand looks like from the back. You really want to try to keep your thumb uh, kind of like more or less in the middle, really across from the middle finger. So wherever you put your middle finger here, it's usually going to be somewhere between the first and, you know, the index finger and the middle finger is where that thumb's going to rest. And as you walk down the bass, you could, you just walk that thumb down with it. So you don't want to squeeze the bass because then you can't really move the thumb. So you want to keep a nice open hand uh, so you can just kind of rest that thumb there and use it as a support to really kind of get those strings on there. But you want to be able to move your thumb freely. Uh, and that'll, again, help with your tone, help with your technique, and help you not be as tired. Uh, while you're learning, while you're playing, while you're grooving, and all that stuff. Once again, uh, my name is Jose, and uh, thank you for uh, tuning into this lesson. Uh, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, check us out on our Patreon page, which there should be a link on this YouTube channel. Uh, so thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>